a loving father is murdered. You could see, like, this part of his head was blown off. His cold-blooded killer is someone close to home. She looked like she had no soul. And when he's dead, some say his own house becomes party central, complete with a new stripper pole. Never a dull moment from the minute you wake up till the minute you go to sleep. But where is his body? And was money or drugs the motive for murder? Did something else just make this killer snap? I know exactly why she killed him. Now family and friends are speaking out for the first time about the father who was murdered and the twisted teen who pulled the trigger. The Howell family of Augusta, Georgia, Michael, a sports editor, mother Christina, and eldest daughter Sierra all agreed youngest daughter Crystal was a spitfire. How is Crystal as a daughter and raising her? Crystal, she was a lot of fun. Um, she could be a lot of challenges. She would, you know, if there was trouble to be found, she would find it. Um, just a lot of mischief. But soon, the seemingly harmless mischief turned to serious misconduct. Crystal started lying, stealing, and vandalizing other people's property, even setting the neighbor's pool cushion on fire. But there were very strange things that would happen with her when she was younger that kind of convinced most of the world that knew the Howells that Crystal had some problems. Eventually, Crystal was put on medication. Michael didn't want her on that medicine, but he allowed it. He really did not want her to be on it. He thought it changed her personality. Michael's friend Austin Rhodes said Crystal's parents were deeply divided on this issue. And he was saying that um, Christy's way of dealing with Crystal was to medicate her, basically put a theoretical pillow over her face to keep her quiet and to keep her in line, and he just didn't agree with that. He thought it was the cheap and easy way out. Doctors suggested counseling for Crystal, but Michael said no. He had been bullied as a child for going himself. He didn't want Crystal to be stigmatized. Correct. He was constantly at odds with his wife about, you know, the approach they should be taking with Crystal. After 19 years of marriage, Mike and Christina decided to split, largely due to the disagreements over Crystal and a bombshell confession from Christina. Oldest daughter, Sierra, wasn't his biological child. We didn't have a good relationship. He didn't want me around. I wasn't his kid. It was a life-changing family revelation. Crystal and her dad packed up and moved to picturesque Maggie Valley, North Carolina. And with the large inheritance Michael got from his grandparents, bought an eight-bedroom home on Sheepback Mountain. But despite the beautiful, calm setting, Crystal's issues escalated to hard drugs, frequent shoplifting, self-harm, and running away. I mean, she'd be gone two, three weeks at a time sometimes. Michael confided in his friend about his serious concerns. He said she sometimes it's like she has no conscience. And I said, you mean like a sociopath? And he said, yeah, like that. A few years later, Crystal met Summer Ramsey and Taylor Metz at an alternative high school, all becoming fast friends. She was very charismatic, always funny. She was really weird about her feelings. <laughs> she tried to keep them in and make other people happy. I was really good in school. I never really had experience with anyone who had like a history of trouble or anything. And when I met Crystal, it was just like, oh, there's like that teenage rebellion I'm supposed to have. And that so-called rebellion caused Michael to be an even stricter father. Despite that, he and Crystal were exceptionally close. When I looked at their relationship, that's what I wanted to have. They were best friends. He, he loved her, she loved him. Even though he was strict on her, she still adored her father. But that adoration would soon be annihilated. Reportedly, it was a cold February day when Crystal and her father were out at a local store. He was shopping. She was once again stealing. And he caught her shoplifting and made her apologize and they went back home. Back at home, Crystal took a shower and Mike took a nap. It would be his last one. The next day, Crystal told friends her father went on a business trip to Georgia. 
She asked to stay at Taylor's house for a couple of weeks until he returned. Then a phone call that Crystal tells her friends has changed everything. And it was about two or three days into her being over there when we came home from the school and her mom called her. And that was when her mom told her that her dad had killed himself. She's like crying hysterically and she's trembling and she's, my dad killed himself, what do I do, what do I do, he killed himself. Summer and Taylor took care of their friend that night, then a light bulb went off. They made a plan to move into Crystal's house to live with the now fatherless team. She was like, yeah, that works out perfect. And like, everyone was excited. Is she grieving at all? I mean, I guess in her own weird Crystal way, she seemed a little bit messed up about it. But apparently not for long. Reportedly, life for the teens on Sheepback Mountain turned into a never ending wild party. Crystal even installed a stripper pole in the kitchen. And all the newfound fun was being paid for by Crystal's dad. She did have his bank card, so he would, she would pay the bills and like the lights and her phone bill and stuff like that. And she would buy everybody food. Summer says reports of a party house are greatly exaggerated. She claims the stripper pole was just for fun and exercise. And the parties, well, it was just one big party, but that party was a doozy. There was like 50 people there, more than what we ever wanted. And friends say Crystal had drugs for everyone. She brought drugs into the house. What kind of drugs are we talking? It was meth. Summer says Crystal did drugs that night, but during the party, things got strange, and Summer believes someone also slipped her something more potent. She was acting crazy. She was out of the world. Not the Crystal that I know. She was just kind of hallucinating. There was just kind of like smoke drifting in the air sometimes, and she would see smoke clouds, and she would say, oh my gosh, it's my dad. Summer says she and Taylor took care of strange and dysfunctional Crystal after the party. She sat in a chair for two weeks and did not move. For two solid weeks? Yes. Crystal eventually recovered and informed her friends she was going to her mom's and would be back in six months. She told her friends they could stay, but while she was away, there was one very important rule in the house. Don't go near the shed. She just asked us to stay away from it. This is her exact words. That's where me and my dad went to hang out, and that's special to me. So we just kind of stayed away from it. Crystal Howell was suddenly alone. The 17-year-old moved her friends into her dad's North Carolina mountainside cabin. Many say it was a non-stop party zone complete with a newly installed stripper pole. Never a dull moment. Not a dream, but like a, like something you wouldn't imagine. And where was her dad, Michael? Crystal first told friends he was away on business. Then she said he committed suicide. But three weeks after her friends moved in, Crystal made a move of her own to her mother's house in Augusta, Georgia. So when she took off, did she say you guys can still live here? Yeah, she told me we could stay up there and that she would pay for the electric and that if we needed help with food or anything to contact her, she said, I'll be back after my birthday. But before she left, Crystal made one perplexing demand, asking her friends to follow one rule while she was gone. Do not go in the shed. Crystal packed her belongings into a U-Haul, withdrew at least 3,000 from her dad's bank account, and drove off in his orange Land Rover. The very next day, Crystal's friend Summer broke that one important rule and walked right into a nightmare. She had this pinball machine downstairs, and she had told us that we could sell it. We were bringing it back because we didn't end up selling it. So we were bringing it back, and I was like, why would we move it all the way back downstairs? So we just popped the lock off of the shed. You could smell it as soon as you opened the door. It was awful. You opened it, and you said the smell was the first thing. Yeah, the smell was the first thing. I just opened it like this, and I was standing right about here, and there was one blue bin in this corner, and I just walked in, I looked, and that was all I needed to know. He was like folded like this down in it, like that. And you could see 
like this part of his head was blown off. Horrified, Summer says she thought the body may have been a party goer from the blowout they had two weeks before, then quickly realized no, it was Crystal's father. And so at that point, you guys just ran. We and immediately left. Terrified, Summer went directly to the Haywood County Sheriff's Office. In those moments, did you think she had done that? Yes, I did. I thought she was trying to frame me. You? Yes. That was initially what I thought. I was scared. <laughs> because she's nowhere to be found and you're on the property. Yeah. It looked bad. <laughs> did she have access to a gun? Her father owned a gun. She had told me that she gave, he gave her the gun so that she could have protection, and she sold it to my dad yeah. for $20. That's another reason that made me think she's trying to frame me. So where was Crystal? The North Carolina authorities were looking for her, but she was long gone. Crystal had made it to her hometown in Georgia. I was on my way to work and I actually saw the, the car in the parking lot and I pulled over, talked to her. But she wasn't her normal self. She was not wanting to be touched when you tried to hug her. It was weird. It was really uncomfortable. She looked like she had no soul. She looked like she, there was no, nobody in there. In the conversation? No conversation, really. She said hello, and that was basically it. Christina and Sierra said their goodbyes to Crystal. Little did they know what had been done and what was to come. Just hours later, the authorities found Crystal Howell sleeping at a local motel and took her into custody. What was the scenario when you first rolled up? She was very quiet to begin with um, and was a acting. And when I say acting, I do mean acting because you could tell she was trying to act like she didn't know what was going on and that she was just innocent. That's I could tell she was, it was a put on. Investigators soon interrogated Crystal. I was able to watch uh, live as they were talking to her and just her demeanor, the way she was just nonchalant about everything, it would send chills through your spine. I mean, it just very cold hearted. Crystal Howell was charged with first degree murder. When Christina learned what her youngest daughter had done, she went right to the station. Did you get to talk to her in the police station? She gave me a hug and she said, I didn't mean to do it. It's the only thing she said. Crystal soon confessed to the murder. She tells police as her father slept on the sofa, she shot him in the head with his own gun. She then moved his body into the shed and moved her friends into the house. She took approximately $12,000 from her father's bank account and used a cell phone to search how long a body takes to decompose. That's all I could see is her blowing his head off. That's all I could see. I didn't think that she was capable of that. So the how was clear, but what about the why? She was the kind of person that you could easily predict at one point was going to be in serious trouble if you just had no idea she could turn a gun on her own father. While in custody, Crystal was diagnosed with several mental disorders. Many believed it was her untreated mental issues, a subject her parents had always been on opposite sides of that caused her to snap. He wanted a solution that didn't involve drugging her. And he, it is wonderful a thought as that was, and unfortunately, I think, cost him his life. Could it have been prevented? I think had she been treated and medicated from eight, nine, 10 years old. Maybe her brain may have functioned in a different way. She was not given that opportunity. So I, as a parent, I failed in, in that aspect. Crystal Howell took a plea deal and was sentenced to 30 years in prison. Family and friends are now left to pick up the pieces and try to make sense of the senseless. Do you have any anger or resentments toward her? I do have a little resentment. I was working on fixing my relationship, and then she just took him away. What would Crystal want people to know about her? She's not a monster. No, she's not a monster, but she needed help that she didn't get. I need to know why she did it. Because she not only ruined her father's life by killing him, she ruined a lot of people that loved her life. 
this one that everybody has to live with. Not fair.